I told him, listen, I don't think this, tournament, this tennis thing is going to work if we don't have money. I'm Vanessa Canby and as you can see, I'm in a different scene here, wearing something a bit different, you know, trying to get a bit sporty. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually a professional, I just didn't tell anyone. And I'm here with Nartika Edu, one of the first female professional tennis players. She's also set up this incredible tennis academy for kids to come up and we're gonna hear all about it. Hi Vanessa, hi. 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 We're definitely gonna hit the ball today. Absolutely. I've literally not done that probably in like over 20 years. Oh wow. What got you into tennis first? So my dad, he used to play. Back then he would come with me, I would go with him to the court to pick up balls. I just started watching everything they were doing. So one day he was playing at home, hitting the wall and I pick his racket and boom, I started doing everything he was doing and I think that was it. That was, it was just a click that he was like, you're gonna play tennis? and wow. here I am. <laughs> Did you think at that point that you were going to play professionally? Of course, from the very first day oh, I picked up a racket. Wow, that I, is so amazing. I know, because like I was like uh, maybe 9, 10 and because I remember the first time he said you're going to play tennis. He showed me Venus because then it was Venus that was raining and he showed me Venus and the, from the very first day I knew his goal wasn't just you know go play and have fun, no. <laughs> so I knew it was a serious business, I knew you had to learn and learn the right way and honestly even after like two months of um, being in the game I just loved it so much. I was so competitive mm -hmm. right from the beginning. And what does it take to be a professional player especially here in Ghana? Hmm. We find ourselves in a country where tennis is definitely not a popular sport. That's number one. It's quite expensive to play. So it's played among just a quite, like just a little bit, a few people, you know. Mm -hmm. And one, it takes lots of time, which our school system doesn't allow. So you find out that a lot of the players who play for the national team have to sacrifice a little bit of school hours for tennis. And then also it takes lots of money, like it's lots of investments. Rackets cost like a fortune here. And then mostly we're buying everything from outside. We don't even have brands that are established here that can sponsor, you know. Mm. We have some incredible coaches in the country, but then it boils down to how we're managing even the sports as a business. Cause then a lot of the people don't give their hundred percent because they're not getting enough money out of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's so much room for improvement. We have so many talents and we're, we're bringing it up, but definitely it's, it's such a difficult thing to do in Ghana mm -hmm. here. How much time at that sort of age were you actually like dedicating to the sport? I quite remember in the beginning, I was doing just after school, but I think after six months, I started doing like uh, maybe two hours in the morning before school, and then maybe another two hours after school. Wow. And then eventually during vacations, it was almost like we're spending the whole day on the tennis court. I remember we used to cook and everything, and my mom would come along with all our, our lunch and then our breakfast, and then we'd, stay, we'd spend the whole day at the Aquas Ball Stadium, just playing tennis, take breaks, ease, go back. It was just back and forth throughout. And was that your dad who was like taking you to the core and stuff yeah. like that? When we started it was my dad but eventually within the same year my dad got, my mom got into it and actually started learning how to play and she's oh, quite wow. good. Oh, she is really cool. good. She started playing and then it became like my parents were involved so they were there every step of the way my mom and my dad and even times when like um, my dad is teaching me something and I, I wasn't getting it my mom would actually come and explain what he, she was doing oh. he's doing so I mean it was a family thing after I was introduced to tennis all my siblings got into tennis do you think without your family support you probably wouldn't have got to the place absolutely and even till date I mean without my mom's support without her being there because you know this the, uh, doing something that is very different from what uh, most Ghanaians are used to can be a bit difficult and tricky in this country so you there's there's going to be the ups and downs and I still have my mom and my sister who would who supports me and be like oh just keep going these things were just they're just obstacles but you can you can always get over them so even till date yes they still support me and they did even more when I was like uh, a pro player Coming up, like what was your career? How did it go? What was the journey for you? I have mixed feelings about this because I remember at the age of 15, that was the peak of my career. I was one of the best players and I had one of the biggest opportunities that my dad actually, um, how do I put it? Like 
maybe miss out on intentionally and i think that was what just for me destroyed my career so what was that op opportunity so i had um he used to go to the uk a lot and um i think one time when he was going he did like it was the first time he did like a film a video of my play and showed it to i forgot the coach's name but it was one of the biggest coaches there and he was so interested in having me brought to the uk he was interested in changing my nationality even oh, wow. and just and there was like ready sponsorship and everything and I don't want to go into why my dad did that, but he did. And for me, I think that was when everything changed. For me, as a child then, I had put in so much work because I really loved it. Mm -hmm. And I'd put in so much work and that was the break I needed. And it just went away like that. So a lot of things changed after that. It felt like, when else am I going to get an opportunity like this to come? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, after that, played a few tournaments here and there in Ghana and then I decided no I have to at least give it a shot to play in the WTA so I started working towards it and I started playing in the WTAs. I started playing those tournaments in Nigeria here because Nigeria is one of the West African countries that used to hold oh, such right, tournaments okay. and then after that I started going to Italy and then Spain for those tournaments and then I got into the leagues and then started coaching there. So did you like have to self-fund yourself to go? In the beginning yes, I did have like um, some tennis um, the club members who also contributed but in the beginning I can remember we, we used to coach, we used to train and coach and actually gather money save oh, money wow. and then travel with it oh and it was gosh. fun i mean as as tiring or as crazy as it sounds back then we were just young and just with a passion and with a dream so we were so motivated doing that what was the next steps for you okay so in europe i think i remember 2014 that was the last time i ever played a competitive tournament and i remember we played one tournament in calgary in italy and after that tournament, I was with my training partner for years and I told him, listen, I don't think this, tournament, this tennis thing is going to work if we don't have money. Because I remember that tournament, everybody who saw us play was so wild by the way we played. They were so, they were like, oh God, you guys, if you, if you could just play more tournaments, you would be so good. And we just kept telling them, we don't have the sponsorship. You know, we didn't have the support. And honestly, we couldn't keep up with our own fans mm -hmm. traveling Europe. No, it's expensive, you can't do that. So I remember that was the very first time it hit me that I need to put my rackets down and actually do something else. I hadn't even thought about doing the academy. I've always had the idea that, okay, one day I'm gonna have an academy or a tennis center here or something like that, you know, one huge something. But at that point, I hadn't thought of like um, starting the academy right there and then. I think it took me a whole year after I came back from um, Italy, it took me almost a whole year to decide that, okay, fine, it's about time that I make that dream come true. And what is the academy? How does it work? <laughs> so basically, we run our sessions very differently. We make sure that we're given them the fundamental training. So they're going through proper physical conditioning and then they're also going through tennis training, which is usually not what the kind of training you find here in Ghana, mostly, especially when you're dealing with kids between the ages of, let's say, three to 12. A lot of people, they come, they just teach them how to hit the balls and then they go back. So you realize that Apart from my upbringing where my dad was very strict with our training, a lot of the kids, uh, they have this more like a laid back training where between the ages of three and um, 12, they don't have the fundamentals when it comes to footwork. They can hit the ball all right, but they don't have the fundamentals when it comes to footwork, movement and all that. So here, even as you can see from here, we make sure that physical conditioning, agility and everything is the first thing we focus on with the kids before they even start training. If you see some of our kids who've been playing for three years, you can tell that these kids are really good. They just, they just look like a mini version of a pro player, mm -hmm. which has been one of the main things I wanted to go for, develop them the right way. That is so amazing. <laughs> You could actually have like the next sort of big, big professional that, players that is in the world. Absolutely, here. my plan here, mm -hmm. right here. And I like the fact that when we start at this academy, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of parents who had girls, like felt so comfortable to have a female running a tennis academy. And eventually, when we started, we were getting lots of boys and all. All of a sudden, I'm like, sometimes I come here and I'm like, what, there's some eight, ten girls on the court and maybe just two boys. I'm like, this is really interesting. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah. you never you never see girls doing sports, especially tennis. It's always the guys. It's mm -hmm. always the boys. So, I mean, I'm happy to see the yeah, girls. Like, yeah, like, you're, you're that inspiration that <laughs> yeah. they need to know that they can really move yeah. forward. And I started putting out 
tennis videos on social media and it was crazy a lot of people were like we didn't even know females play tennis in ghana and i'm like what what's happening like we have we don't have so many players but we do have females who play good mm -hmm. in, te in uh, tennis in ghana a lot of people started like finding about tennis I, I, I realized that a lot of um, parents adults actually started getting into tennis because of those promotional videos I was doing oh, that and it so became cool. from there it just oh, became amazing. yeah <laughs> you obviously came across like a roadblock which was not having sponsorship yeah why do you think it is that you couldn't get it and like is there anything that's holding back Ghanaian players from getting to that next level. I like football, which is a team sport, right? Tennis is very individual, it's individual, and you, you invest in loads in one person, and it sometimes could be like a 50-50 thing. That, their career could go off for no reason, and the risk involved is higher. Mm. That's number one. But also, it's even more expensive to sponsor a tennis player. Let's take a, let's do like a simple comparison. We have football. You can play football anywhere. You can practice football anywhere. All you need is one ball and that says 11 players are sharing. If you want to play tennis, you need to have a racket, you need to have shoes, you have to have grip, you have to have strings, your strings are tearing. Like, it's a whole lot. And so, um, I think initially, a lot of um, companies here were not very ready for um, the amount of money that was... The risk on investment type thing. Absolutely. I found out that recently that it was easier for East African countries to get sponsorship for tennis from international companies than West African countries. I don't want to go into why, but oh. I still want to find out more. But yes, I found out that, oh, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Must be like, have been difficult for you at the time. Yeah, well, it, it, it's always been, because either way, you know, most most countries support their own. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing about it is that in tennis, if the host country, say Ghana, has like, a lot or numerous international tournaments it benefits the country mm -hmm. then it simply means that you can push your players into the main draw they can accumulate points while being their country so it is cheaper for them but the thing is we didn't have those this, those tournaments back then mm -hmm. you know so we always had to travel you're paying tickets you're paying that hotel accommodation everything so it was more expensive for us to play then than now now in the country we have about um what six international oh, right. okay. um, tournaments here and they are under 18 tournaments oh okay yeah so i mean uh, i think things have improved a lot but yes there is still like more room for improvement fight there's a vast room for improvement the other thing that we face here is which i went through that a lot of the players don't have money for their upkick because they're not working they're professional players oh, right, yeah. and there's no tournament for them to play to win money so what happens is oh. they start coaching on the side yeah. in in turn it like it spoils their play because mm -hmm. you can't, can't coach enough yeah you can't no you can't coach and play you're using different groups oh, you're doing right. different oh, things so it messes up their play oh completely. i didn't actually know that so now maybe you could show me how to like <laughs> hit the ball a little bit yes okay it wasn't complicated enough i'm taking this very seriously go low and faster oh okay. good okay okay so what do I need to do? First of all, I need to get well. So oh, you do know this is a racket, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have perfect. played a couple times before. <laughs> These five balls, pass me five balls. Hi. So this is Coach Rafael, uh, head coach here. He's actually a very terrific coach. Yeah. So do you also play tennis? Yeah, I do play tennis. Oh, right. So what age were you when you started? Six years. Oh, so you started young as well? Yeah. And how did you get into it? Uh, one of my friends were tennis player, so I used to take them to the court and I decided to learn how to play. So the school me and Oh that is cool. <laughs> so it seems like everyone has like a connection of one person yeah. to tennis. It, it's not yeah. just like well now I guess you're changing things. Yeah. But maybe back then it was like mm -hmm. you had to know somebody. Yeah. That I mean if if you didn't you wouldn't even know it existed. That's mm, the thing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. So what we do here is we're gonna assess you first. It doesn't matter your level, we always wanna assess and see and then we can show you a few tricks. Okay. So let me see wow. how you play. Serious. Okay. I'm actually I'm gonna surprise you. <laughs> Maybe I'm actually a professional, I just didn't tell anyone. This is turning out very funny. Okay, so you're ready, let's go. One, two. Okay, that's not bad. That's really not bad. Okay, let's go. Okay, again. Okay, oh come on, God. hold the racket for everyone. Oh, oh my God. God. Let the ball go. Another one was coming so fast. <laughs> okay. Vanessa, you're not bad. You're really good, actually. Oh, that's good. This is your ready position. Okay. okay. You're ready? Good. 
Let's go. Okay. 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 So let's see what was that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So that's one zero for me. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. And oh. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you're actually quite good. Oh wow, maybe I'll actually I'm actually enjoying this. I might yeah. actually start playing. Your hand to eye coordination is good. I'm actually really enjoying it though. You're enjoying it, that's good. Like because you're really good. Oh, you have the coordination, so it's fine. Try and win this point. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh, great, thanks. Nice. It was actually so fun. Like, I really enjoyed that. Wow. So, for anyone who wants to try a tennis adult or child, how do they find you? So, you can go on our Instagram pages or Facebook, Ace Tennis Ghana, um, or our website, Ace Tennis Academy Ghana. Okay. Perfect. Thanks so much.